You're watching your local television network, TSPN. And now back to Today's Seniors Living Well with your host, Lori Webb. Hi everyone, welcome back to today's seniors living well. <coughs> Change is good, really it is. Um, with me I have, now I was going to practice saying your name, last name Ed, Ed? Can Getter. Can Getter. Yeah. And he can, I'm sure you my, joke my about wife, that. My wife wants me to change it to Did Getter, but <laughs> here we are. Well, here we are. So, yeah. and Ed, you're a volunteer with what used to be called the Senior Peer Counseling. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's called? The Senior Visitor Program. Uh, we thought it was more in line with the types of activities that we perform and, and help uh, people with. Um, a lot of your viewers may not be familiar with even the, the original program, but it's it's been in the county for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Houghton, uh, her, her background is in mental health, and when she retired from the county, uh, she saw a need to develop a program that would assist uh, people as they age and uh, this has raised a number of different issues and uh, what I what I hope to tell you this morning is uh, uh, the answer to these questions who can access the program mm -hmm. uh, what can the program do for you mm -hmm. and how does one become a senior visitor uh, volunteer great if, if you're so interested well let's try to get all that in in 12 minutes okay well here we go okay uh, first of all who can access the program um, virtually any senior in the county. Mm -hmm. It's free and open to the public anywhere in Amador County and you can arrange an appointment by contacting the Senior Center mm -hmm. and you probably know this number by heart at 223-0442. <laughs> One of my favorite numbers. One of your favorite numbers. <laughs> Okay, so secondly, what can the program do for you? Well, once we receive a call from a senior, uh, what we'll do is we'll schedule an appointment. Uh, a senior visitor will be assigned, call the individual, and set up a mutually convenient time and location, usually at the senior's home. Mm -hmm. And can we, we'll just back up for one second, because mm -hmm. when they call the senior center, we don't set the appointments up then. We no. relay that information to Pat. Good point, good point. And Pat, who knows all of you. Right takes it on to the, the step that you're describing Exactly, now. exactly. So it, it might be a day or so for the right. information right. to get transmitted. But once that's done, then uh, uh, the assigned person will contact the senior, mm -hmm. arrange for a meeting, again, convenient to the senior at their home or the senior center or mm -hmm. wherever it's convenient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have a discussion with that person to get an idea of what their concerns are. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a list of the different types of things that we sometimes find with people but uh, sometimes there's health concerns uh, for instance uh, specialized support for diabetes and uh -huh. Alzheimer's uh -huh. it's not that we do it but it's more that we put the person in contact with resources in the county that they might not be familiar with right like Robin I called her the transportation resource broker. Exactly. you're kind of a service resource broker right well and in the transportation thing I, I was chatting with Robin on the way in here and uh, what we would do is we would identify the problem that mm -hmm. the person has uh, transportation problems mm -hmm. in getting to a doctor's appointment or lab work or or going to a Walmart to buy food uh -huh. and and in that case, we would probably refer them to Robin, and Robin could set them up and get her form filled out and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the senior peer counseling is um, similar to what Common Ground does with their information and assistance, but it's a much more personalized kind of service. Exactly. But I would remind you again that we changed the name. Yes, you okay. know, so that's I've been fine. with it for that, that, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you, senior you, visitor. Senior visitors, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so um, these are the types of things that we get into. Um, mobility restrictions are another area for individual seniors. Uh -huh. I, th I think the way to look at what we do is to try to get on a personal basis with the individuals and see if we can do things to improve their ability to stay where they are. If they want to stay in their home, mm -hmm. uh, that's what a lot of folks want to do. Yeah. 
Definitely. Some folks, uh, particularly people that are up country, they have problems with snow. Mm -hmm. They've lost their license for whatever reason. They, mm -hmm. they have transportation. And they're very isolated for, uh, for interactions and things mm -hmm. like this. So what we try to do is uh, help them, in some cases, even to move. Uh, there's, there's different housing programs that rather than be in a, uh, a standalone home by themselves uh -huh. up in the country, mm -hmm. they'd rather be in a more social setting and we, we try to facilitate that as well. So, so that's almost like a case management thing where you would help them um, look at the options and, and then make a plan to move. You don't actually bring the moving truck and move them. No, no. We, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. If Pat were here, she'd probably say we could do that too. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know that we've done that at this point. Uh-huh. You haven't actually moved anybody. I, I personally have not okay. actually moved anybody. But you can help them think about all the stuff exactly. that it takes yeah. to plan. Because yeah. that's a pretty overwhelming task. So uh, one, one of the points I wanted to emphasize here was that all the conversations are confidential. Mm -hmm. uh, people wind up talking about a lot of personal information, family things, mm -hmm. uh, relationship things mm -hmm. that they're having a problem with. And this is a very safe forum to do that. It's like, you know, turn your collar around and and take the person's confession mm -hmm. almost. I mean, mm -hmm. it's obviously not that, but uh -huh. it's it's a very safe and secure environment, and um, it's free. Yes. It that, does, doesn't cost a cent. And there's almost no free mental health services <laughs> in the world anymore. And this... Um, so, and this is all, all volunteers, right? Yeah, uh, and that, that brings me to the uh, third point here, how does one become a volunteer? Mm -hmm. And I think some questions that you want to ask yourself if you're thinking about this is, do you enjoy working with seniors? Are you a good listener? Are you interested in the issues of aging? Uh, do you want to learn more about your community mm -hmm. and the resources for seniors that are uh, there? there? Mm -hmm. If you can answer affirmatively to all of these questions, then guess what? call the senior center we probably ought to you know develop a jingle here but it's two two three zero four four two right and someone at the senior center will take your call and refer it again to pat and th that will get the ball rolling okay. and our group as uh, consists of three men and six women all volunteers uh -huh. and we'll be happy to uh, help a new person get up to speed great so so they call, I give their name to Pat, and then Pat calls them, and then what happens? Well, at that point, Pat would uh, interview them uh, either in person or over the phone, mm -hmm. and uh, subsequently invite them to, we have uh, monthly, we have two meetings per month, the second and the fourth Wednesday. Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'll be going there in a few minutes. Right. And uh, at that meeting, the person will get a sense for the types of issues that come up. Uh, and, and subsequently, if they're still interested, then Pat will uh, put them through a training program to, mm -hmm. to bring them up to speed. And uh, uh, they'll get the support of the rest of the group, of course, to, uh, to learn what to do and how to do. And a lot of the volunteers in the senior um, visiting senior visitor program yes, thank you. have been with it from the very beginning. Oh yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good experience support exactly. that people can get. Initially, I remember the training was like so arduous. It was like 22 weeks, and we were not. <laughs> people were a lot. Willing, they were willing to commit to visiting people, but they weren't willing to commit to 22 weeks of classes. So I'm very glad to hear that it's been streamlined because I know the social workers at uh, Home Health really rely on being able to refer folks. Where else are you getting referrals from? That's a good point also. We, we get referrals from other agencies in the county. So um, they will call us because I've, I've got a, a list here for that as well. Um, a person feels uh, housebound and isolated, they're depressed, they're chronically ill and alone, they're wanting to transition from their home to another facility. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said before, we, we won't actually move them, but we'll help facilitate their lining up the new spaces. And uh, if they're having family problems, marital problems, and things of that nature, all of these issues are discussed. And sometimes we get referrals from doctors. Sometimes we get referrals from Common Ground or uh, any of the home health agencies uh, that uh, that help, you know, that are already right, assigned I, to people. Right. I know um, 
I'm very familiar with uh, United Personal Care, United Home Care, because mm -hmm. I work part time for them, and I I know that the two social workers there are like, you know, do you have enough volunteers in the senior visitor <laughs> program? Because um, they're of course seeing people who are homebound because of uh, whatever medical. And even if someone's been basically pretty mentally healthy, to, to be laid low with a hip replacement or something yeah. can kind of trigger sometimes a little situational depression. Exactly. And Pat is a um, MSW, right? She was the head of mental health in Amador County, and mm -hmm. she's the one who supervises you all. Yes, yeah. and she's, she's also the founder of the program mm -hmm. and has been with it since inception. Um, are you, do you know Arlene? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, Arlene is just a wealth of knowledge. She's mm -hmm. like a walking history book for Amador County, and uh, she she has been she's had some of her clients, um, as, as well as Marion Guernica, for years. Years, I mean, right? You know, yeah. The the normal time period is like uh, follow up meetings once a week for up to six months. Uh huh. Situation yeah. depending. Yeah. So some some folks just need a little help getting over a hump, like maybe the right. meeting. And then other folks I know um, have required years of kind of being um, looked after. Well, I, I think what also, it, it, it's, it's less the dependency and more of the, they become friends. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I don't know that they're, they're officially assigned at some of these, these points. They're just, uh, they become good friends become and they, they like the right. visit. Yeah. Right. And I know there's a lot of folks out, out there who are going, oh, well, you know, I do that for my neighbor, and I really like it. Maybe, maybe I should think about joining up with this program. Yeah, the, the, the thing that it would do is help formalize that relationship mm -hmm. and uh, give you the the uh, resources that we have access to. Right, the added and the support training and, and yeah, yeah, and the discussion and the oh my gosh, this happened, and what do I do about it mm -hmm. now? So exactly. uh, once again, if People can self-refer to the program by calling 223-0442 and let whoever answers the phone know you uh, want to get a senior peer counselor. Or if they want to be a volunteer, they can call the same number and we, we, sign we up. We look forward to uh, signing them up. That would be great. Well, Ed, thank you for being here today. You're welcome. And all of you compassionate people out there who are thinking about um, how to exercise your compassion, give us a call and talk about the Senior Visitor Program. And stay tuned, we're going to go to break and come back and have a discussion with a very active senior. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.